today, a top Democrat venturing where no top Democrat under Donald Trump has gone before. House Judiciary Chairman Jerry Nadler suggesting today that his committee is already, in effect, conducting an impeachment inquiry against Donald Trump. You're saying there's no difference between what you're doing now and an impeachment inquiry, correct? It is a new development. It's a new development in the impeachment debate. This committee echoed today in writing, in a court filing, in fact, that demanded more of Robert Mueller's underlying evidence from that court filing. Quote, articles of impeachment are under consideration as part of this committee's investigation, although no final determination has been made, unquote. Reporting today in The New York Times and The Washington Post says that Nadler, whose committee is responsible for recommending articles of impeachment, has gone even further behind closed doors as the debate over how to proceed in the wake of Robert Mueller's testimony this past week intensifies among Democrats. This is from The New York Times, quote, Nadler has gradually become convinced that his panel should proceed with impeachment hearings and do so as expeditiously as possible, though he's not stated so publicly, according to lawmakers and aides familiar with his thinking. The Washington Post adds this, quote, Nadler suggested his committee could begin drafting articles of impeachment. Nadler also argued that public sentiment was against impeachment when the House of Judiciary Committee started its proceedings against President Richard Nixon in 1974 over the Watergate scandal, but support grew through the hearings. Now, that posture reflected the gap between Nadler and Nancy Pelosi, who has argued that the public must support impeachment first before Democrats act. Joining us now, White House Bureau Chief of the Washington Post, the one and only Phil Rucker, the amazing former U.S. Attorney Joyce Vance, plus the fantastic Kimberly Atkins, senior correspondent for Boston's public news station, WBUR. And with me here at this table, <laughs> Reverend Al Sharpton, the host of Politics Nation here on MSNBC and the president of the National Action Network. Amazing to see you, as always, in New York Magazine's national correspondent, the in- infinitely talented Gabe DiBenedetti. Guys, uh, Rucker, I want to start with you. Um, the, the whole Nadler thing today, after all of this, Will there be impeachment? Will there not be impeachment? I was on television with you the night after the Mueller testimony. We both agreed that what we were hearing from Democrats was impeachment probably dead. Now you've got Nadler basically saying, I'm kind of doing impeachment already. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, he's made it clear that that is under consideration. That doesn't mean there's going to be an impeachment trial on Monday. For example, there are a lot of steps that have to happen first, and we've heard Speaker Pelosi be much more uh, cautious and judicious in her approach to this. She said, uh, and this is her word, that the Democrats needed to be sophisticated uh, in how they approach this, that they want to have the best hand possible if and when they move forward uh, with impeachment proceedings. And by that, she means gathering more evidence, having more hearings, Central to this is Don McGahn, the former White House counsel, uh, who Nadler's committee has been trying to bring forward uh, for public testimony that, uh, you know, remains under negotiation. But that would be a big uh, moment for the Democrats, potentially. Uh, But there are a lot of steps here still to come. Kimberly Atkins, I want to ask you a question after I play a little bit of Nancy Pelosi here. So Pelosi is getting accused by a variety of people of sort of slow walking impeachment. She doesn't want to do it, but she has to make sure the base thinks she's kind of open to doing it. Let's hear what she had to say uh, in the face of that accusation. I'm not trying to run out of the cot. Let's get sophisticated about this, okay? The decision will be made in a timely fashion. This is an endless. And when we have a, a, the best, strongest possible case, So, Kim, talk to us about what you think Nancy Pelosi's calculations at this hour are in the wake of Mueller, now that that's over, that not seeming to have changed a lot of minds, and certainly a lot of people in the caucus still, uh, some very adamantly for impeachment, uh, beginning an impeachment proceeding, some very strongly against. What's, What's the political calculus she's going through as they head into this recess? I think she is sticking to the plan that she's had from the beginning because of that divergence in opinion within the Democratic caucus. I mean, Democrats that I talked to, both those who are on, uh, who are pushing for impeachment proceedings and those who aren't quite there yet, say they understand that all of the Democrats in the caucus have different considerations with their districts coming up on what will be a very big election year. A lot of folks are in swing districts. They're 
their base is a lot more, their, their constituency is a lot more moderate and may not have an appetite for impeachment while others do. And Nancy Pelosi is trying to stay that course and walk that line and say, hey, we are working, we are doing something. Uh, but behind the scenes, I don't think that she is moved by this. I think absent some big groundswell, if there is a change in American sentiment and uh, those folks let lawmakers know during the six week break uh, that they really want impeachment and you get dozens of lawmakers coming back, a majority of Democrats coming back and pushing for it. I just don't see where this goes. I mean, Chairman Nadler made the point that he doesn't need the word impeachment to do his investigation. And if that's the case, I think you'll see people on the other side arguing, then just do the investigation and let's stop talking about impeachment. So, Joyce, uh, I don't think we're going to stop talking about it, although it's not clear exactly what we're going to do about it. It's certainly true that Nadler is in court trying to get at this grand jury testimony uh, that was some of the underlying evidence for the Mueller inquiry. We've got NBC News reporting that Pelosi signed off on the articles of impeachment language that was in today's court filing that I read in a little bit, a little bit ago. T talk to us a little bit about what Democrats have to gain potentially from trying to get that evidence and from pressing to try to get Don McGahn up there in front of Congress. So a couple of things, John, and, and it's important to remember if you divorce for a moment the legal and the political aspects of this, legally this is really a master move. Because the White House is forcing Democrats to go into court to fight for every little bit of evidence that they hope to acquire, the Democrats strengthen their hand in terms of what the law provides by being able to tell the judge, Look, this is a proceeding that's precedent to a quasi-judicial hearing, which is a fancy way of saying we're investigating whether or not we should file articles of impeachment, which, after all, are very much like an indictment. Prosecutors don't walk into the office one day and say, let's indict. They investigate first. That's what Congress is doing. And the court now recognizes, or, or will likely recognize, it looks like black letter law to me, that this gives them the ability to get information that the White House has tried to block. And Don McGahn is, I think, really the prize here. There will undoubtedly be things in the grand jury material that no one has seen before that will be of value. It's hard to assess that until one sees it. But Don McGahn is a known quantity. And if Democrats can put him up in front of Congress in, you know, whether he's a reluctant witness or a compliant one, because they have the transcripts that Mueller has left them, they know what his testimony is, they will be able to hold him accountable if he deviates from it. And hearing the president's former White House counsel telling the story of how the president asked him to fire Bob Mueller and then to cover it up, to lie to the press, to create fake documents to put into their official files, that has the potential to be moving in a way that the Mueller testimony, although it was substantively very informative, was not dramatic. So, Rev, I ask you, um, you got this recess, right? People say, you know, Democrats going to go home. We know what the polling says about, about support for an impeachment inquiry. It's not super strong. It's not overwhelming. And it doesn't seem to be moving in a dramatic way. People, Democrats going to go home. They're going to do town meetings. I, you know, there's some parts of the country where Democrats can raise the roof by talking about how the president needs to be impeached, but a lot of places where a lot of Democrats are going to go home and they're not going to talk about this. So in the course of how we get to Labor Day and we come back and we're looking at McGahn, we're looking at some of these other things, what's, what's the likelihood that we're going to get to Labor Day, Congress is going to come back in session, Nancy Pelosi is going to see the world in a new light? I think that one, one of the things we have to watch is what happens with McCann, and if something comes out over the uh, six-week break that Congress is going to have that would turn some of that tide around. But there are districts that there are going to be a vociferous uh, effort to get uh, uh, a, an impeachment proceeding going that's going to fire up some of the congressional members that they are going to have to come back in and have to really try to light a fire uh, even though they may not be the majority of the caucus. Because I, if, if I were in a district that is very vehement against Trump, which some of them are, you would not want to face a town hall. You would not want to face your constituents because just as it is difficult for those in swing states to really even risk impeachment proceedings, right. it's even more difficult for those in progressive 
or even center left state, uh, districts to justify why they're not proceeding, particularly when you have Jerry Nadler, who is not some wild out radical saying the things that he is saying and gradually moving there. So it's going to be uncomfortable for a lot of people that are in the Congress. So, Gabe, I want to ask you this. You know, the, the Democrats, we, there was a lot of talk. We're here at the end of Mueller week, right? Right. A lot of Democrats said before Mueller, they said, you know, you've read the book. The book didn't really change public opinion. Now we got to see the movie. Mueller was not, did not want to play a starring role in some movie that was going to make this all come to life. He gave damning confirmation, reaffirmation of things that were in his report it, on the substance, on the merits. It's a devastating report against Donald Trump, but it was not the movie. It was right. not, you know, Independence Day. It was not, you know, uh, you know, uh, any of these, like some big blockbuster that changed everything. Now Democrats try to figure out what do we do with what we got? Right. And I want to put a tweet up here, this Ted Lou tweet. Um, Lou, Lou tweets this out. Analogy, Mueller gives us a slice of bread, puts ham on it, and then another slice of bread. We say that's a ham sandwich. Mueller says, I didn't make a determination whether or not it's a ham sandwich because I was instructed that I can't call it that. But it's still a ham sandwich. So that's, to me, an, a, an example yeah. of Democrats trying to figure out how do we sharpen a message that can maybe pierce uh, the public's lack of interest or, or the, the fog of all of this complicated legal stuff. Right. How, how do you think Democrats are doing and approaching that task? Well, I think what you saw from Nadler today and what he's been talking about for the last few days is really the answer to that question. If we're going to use the, uh, we saw the book, now look at the movie analogy. Well, maybe the movie wasn't a big splash, but maybe the investigative miniseries might be. So they're going to try and call more people to Congress for testimony, whether it's McGahn or other people who have worked in the White House. I think the short answer is these investigations will keep going and they're going to hope for some sort of splashy headline here. But the reality here is that uh, if the tide really turns, it's going to be, be because there's more pressure from individual members of Congress and they're going to feel that pressure uh, as we've just been talking about over the last few weeks. It's very important to note even after the Mueller testimony, which was widely thought of as sort of a dud, uh, at least in New York and Washington, it's not like the number of members calling for impeachment went down. It's continued ticking up right. towards 100 now. That is a significant number. And as we've just been talking talking about, there's going to be more probably in the next few weeks. Rucker, I ask you the same question, basically, when you hear from people on Capitol Hill and almost as relevant when you hear from people in that bureau that you run, uh, the people who hang out at the White House, like what's the message that Democrats could craft out of what is now uh, out there in the combination of the report, the Mueller testimony, the video that exists? What's the message that Democrats are trying to craft and to the extent that they are crafting it successfully? Is the White House worried about that at all, or are they just like, hey, man, we're all good now? Well, John, the White House has been much more successful in crafting a message to the American people, which, while it's not truthful, is very simple and easy to understand. No collusion, no obstruction, total exoneration. Mueller's six hours of testimony in the House on Wednesday refuted that line, but it was very sort of complicated and nuanced and difficult to remember. It's not a bumper sticker, for example. And so the challenge Democrats have had uh, in the Congress is how to communicate to the American people the urgency behind this and how to communicate what exactly Trump did wrong and, and what exactly they believe he should be impeached over. And one thing to keep an eye on is the emerging presidential race on the Democratic side. That's going to take center stage more and more as we head into the fall and winter uh, of this year. And so many of those presidential candidates are calling for impeachment. It's right. a subject not necessarily with voters, but it has been in the debates and it has been in the media interviews that these candidates are giving. So there's this pressure coming uh, from outside of the Congress but within the party. So, Rucker, you, you sort of took us to the White House fog machine here. And I, just for the sake of the reality and the record, I want to put this up. There's a, this is what the, the, the fake, false, lying, grotesque BS email that the Trump campaign sent out on Mueller Day. Let's put this up and see what it says. Here it is. There it is. Here's the fog machine. Robert Mueller confirmed what we already know. No collusion, no obstruction, total exoneration. There it is. So that's, that's what the White House, you talked about the clarity of their message. Here's the reality. Again, just to remind everyone what Bob Mueller said on those topics. Go. Yeah. The president has repeatedly claimed that your report found there was no obstruction and that it completely and totally exonerated him. But that is not what your report said, is it? Correct. That is not what the report said. And what about total exoneration? Did you actually totally exonerate the president? No. Now, in fact, your report expressly states that it does not exonerate the president. It does. So, Joyce, 
I want to ask you this. Uh, given that that is, you know, here's the, the, the White House line. It's an abject lie. Here's Mueller stating categorically that it's false. Um, here's all of the stuff we know. What's, the, what's the, the big message that Democrats must get across? On top of which, I'll just add, that one of the places that Mueller went in the hearings that w was a little surprising to people was the extent to which he cast doubt on the president's credibility. He got as close to calling the president a fat liar as he, being Bob Mueller, could ever come when he talked about the lack of credibility that he had in, compared, in comparison to other witnesses. So taken all together, what's the, the message that Democrats could potentially drive that the American public really needs to hear? You know, I think Phil's right when he says the president does a much better job of writing bumper stickers than the Democratic Party does. But really, it's tough to take these difficult, complex issues and turn them into a bumper sticker. I guess you could say the president is a crook. But the more important line for Democrats to get across is that the president tried to preserve his own self-interest when the country was under attack from Russia. Maybe the, the real wisdom here that we get from Bob Mueller is Russia attacked us and the president did nothing. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.